First story. I checked my girlfriend's work phone and found out she was cheating. So I dumped her and kicked her out of my apartment. Throw away. As I don't want this vent associated with my real account. I am 31 have been in a relationship with my girlfriend Mia, F29 for a bit more than two years. Overall, life has been good for us. And our relationship has always felt very strong. For most of our time together, I imagined that we'd eventually get married, have kids, and grow old together. Mia has said that is what she wanted several times herself. Starting around June of this year, Mia started acting strangely. She became stressed out with her work and became very snappy towards me. I tried my best to be supportive during this time, given that she had just started a new job, but she would constantly push me away. I got suspicious when I started noticing how protective she was of her work phone around me. She'd be reading stuff on it all the time, and she always looked so happy while doing so. Whenever I would come by, she would quickly lock the screen. This continued for a few weeks, and I'm not proud to admit it, but I started shoulder surfing Mia whenever she'd bring out her work phone, and after about a week of this, I learned the password. What's ironic is that around this time I was also ring shopping, as I planned on proposing some point in the fall, but that never panned out. So, one day in August, when Mia was out with some of her friends, I took this as an opportunity to go through her work phone, and what I found completely destroyed me. I really don't want to get into the details, but in summary, Mia started a relationship with one of her co-workers Paul. From what I could tell, it went on for about two months. Paul kept on pressing her to leave me, but Mia seemed reluctant and kept on giving him excuses for why she couldn't leave, but reassured him that she'd continue seeing him. When Mia came home, I confronted her, and she surprisingly owned up to it. She apologized and cried more than I ever remembered. She said she never meant to hurt me, and that she'd take it back if she could. She claimed that her stress and depression clouded her judgment, and that Paul was a loser who couldn't compare to me. I don't remember much of the conversation, but I do remember it ending with us agreeing to take a break from each other for a few weeks so that I could gather my thoughts. She moved in with one of her friends that night. The pain and disappointment I felt over the next few weeks were crippling. Over time, I feel like I completely morphed into an angry and bitter person. I honestly don't even recognize myself sometimes. Mia returned to my apartment at the start of October and apologized again. She said that she couldn't even imagine the pain she brought me and has vowed to never cheat again. I do believe her, as she has asked Paul not to contact her unless it was work-related, and she has been trying her utmost to repair things with me. She is constantly putting in maximum effort to please me and is adamant that there is no one else she'd rather spend the rest of her life with. We have also started couples therapy on Mia's dime. But to be completely honest, I'm checked out of this relationship as everything about Mia annoys me now, from how she looks to the sound of her voice. At this stage, I've made up my mind that I want to dump Mia. The experience has spoiled this relationship for me. I've also started chatting with some other women on dating apps. I've been on some dates and spent a few nights away. I'm 90% certain that Mia knows what I'm up to, as I have not been discreet about what I've been doing at all. For example, a few nights ago, I was going on a date. I'm guessing Mia knew, as she asked me where I was going. I told her it was none of her concern. She seemed hurt by this, but didn't press me any further. She'll randomly say things like, I love you, or, you mean so much to me. But I either just nod or act like I didn't hear her. I was telling a few of my friends about this last night, and they both think I should just dump her immediately since I'm wasting my own time and Mia isn't worth getting angry over. One of them suggested that I post here to gain some insights from a wider audience, since he thinks I'm being a bit of an arsey hole for dragging this out. So here I am. For those wondering, I'll probably be dumping her and kicking her out of my apartment at some point in January. Update. I plan on dumping my girlfriend without much warning. My girlfriend cheated on me, so I'm going to dump her sometime this month. She doesn't have any real plans on where to go since she's adamant about repairing things with me. Her job might also suffer, but I suppose whatever happens is not my concern. Update. After a decently long delay, I ended up dumping my girlfriend last night. She was very upset, but I think she knew it was coming. She did cry a little and suggested that we continue therapy, but I declined this offer as I don't think this relationship is salvageable. She's staying with one of her friends across town for now, and they'll be collecting her things on Sunday. She needs to find somewhere new to live, as her friend realistically cannot house her for long, and considering how expensive and difficult it is to find somewhere, I suppose it will be tough for her for the next few weeks. I do somewhat regret wasting so much of my time, keeping her around and pretending I was getting something out of therapy but whatever can't change the past. I'm just glad she's out of my hair now. Update. My ex came by to collect her things this morning. She texted me last night, asking if the morning would be better than the afternoon we had planned. 
I accepted this since I kind of wanted it out of the way as soon as possible. She came with one of her friends, and they stayed for about an hour. We didn't talk much during that time. They just packed her things and took a few trips downstairs to put them in the car. I stayed in my home office the entire time as I didn't want to interact with them. Once they finished, my ex came back upstairs alone, left me my second set of mail keys on the kitchen counter, and called me over to lock the door. We said our goodbyes and she left. She seemed and looked very upset throughout the entire ordeal, but thankfully left quietly. It's now over. My apartment feels kind of strange now. If I'm being completely honest, I'd seriously consider moving myself if it wasn't in such a convenient location. Second story. I told my friend the real meaning of her tattoo, and everyone in the friend group got pissed at me. Throw away. My friend group knows my main account. I 37M went out on New Year's Eve with a group of friends, and the group had some friends of friends, basically people I've only known in passing. One of them, Andy 39, brought his girlfriend Julie 30's F. Julie decided to show off a tattoo she got last week. She rolled up her sleeve to show it, and she announced proudly that it said, Strength and Beauty, in Chinese. It was on her forearm, and I almost spit. Now, I have to explain that I'm half Korean, but people have mistaken me for Hispanic, so I don't really look Korean to most Westerners. I'm also not fluent, but I'm conversational in Korean and able to read. The tattoo was in Hangul characters, and it definitely did not say, Strength and Beauty. Julie got upset at my spit take and asked what my problem was. I said, It's not Chinese, and it doesn't say what you think it does. She got even more mad and said what I would know. I explained I was Korean American, can read Korean, and what it says is not nice. I asked her what happened at the tattoo shop, and she said she always wanted to get Asian characters. She went to a shop and saw a Chinese guy in the shop and demanded he be the one to do her ink. I asked Julie and Andy if Julie did anything that could have pissed the tattoo artist off. She denied it, but Andy confessed she was super pushy about it and kept saying she wanted him to do it over any other artist in the shop because he would be used to the characters, plus a few other statements. By this point, she was crying and not enjoying hanging out on New Year's Eve. She wanted to leave and wanted Andy to take her. On her way out, she asked me what it said. I said, it's like the worst thing you could call a woman. It's like B-word but worse. She just burst into tears while walking out. After the two of them left, the rest of my friends said I was a real jerk for spoiling her new tattoo, and I could have made something up or not reacted. I had to explain that the word used is really a cultural faux pas, and to see it on skin is shocking to the highest degree. The fact that I was sipping on a beer when she revealed it only made a spit take impossible to avoid. Well this morning I got some messages from friends saying, I really should apologize to Julie for traumatizing her about her tattoo. I feel like this is ridiculous, like, it's a really vulgar word on her arm, and if I had that on my skin, I'd like to know. But everyone else thinks that I should have just complimented her instead. So, Reddit, am I the arsey hole for revealing to a friend what her tattoo actually says? Relevant comments. Lola Lazulilipis. Throw away Multilingo. So you're just not going to tell us the word. I can read Hangul. OP. Hangul. I was told to never say it. And that it has very negative connotations for women. Or again Zernine. I cannot read Hangul. Is it the C word? That's my guess, based on context clues. OP. It roughly is like B word. But it's very rude. So it might be closer to the C word. Top comments. Crabulibarian. And TA. Hangul and Chinese characters are completely different. She's embarrassed, and rightfully so, because she effed up. Personally, I think you did a solid job by pointing it out. Offer to get a sharpie and fix until she can get it covered. Sigh. Celestria Messenger. If I had vulgarity inked on my body, I would be so thankful someone told me. You did the right thing. And Akinsky Walker is fuff. And TA, you didn't give her the SHTTY tattoo. You informed her that it said something bad. Everyone is only mad at you because you brought it to light, as you should. If I had what sounds like a possible slur on my arm, I would want to know ASAP so I could get the tattoo covered up or laser removed. Update. My friends contacted me a day later and apologized for responding to me the way they did on New Year's Eve. They said they were more worried about the Nye party being brought down that night but after sleeping on it and getting back to work, most of them realized they too would have wanted to know if they got branded with a vulgar word. Also, very few knew Julie and only knew her through Andy, so they mostly tolerated her. Apparently, this isn't her first incident either. And Julie isn't white, which is kind of funny because everyone paints her as some blonde white girl. I decided to play peacemaker, talk to Andy and Julie, and even offered to meet them at the tattoo shop. We went Friday night, walked in, 
and I saw the tattoo artist in question. The funny thing is that most Asians can tell I'm half Asian by looking. So he saw me and went. You told her what it said yes, kind of nonchalantly in Korean. We had a brief discussion in Korean, he remarked that my accent had an American twang to it, asked where my family was from, and found out both our families came from the same city. The gist is that I pointed out he could get sued for the tat. He admitted he pressed his luck with it, and offered to pay out of his pocket for another artist in the shop to do a cover-up. I relayed that back to Julie, and that seemed to appease her. She went to one of the I guess tattoo people would call it a workstation, and he explained that she still has to wait two months. Julie didn't like that. Even when the artist explained that the standard procedure is to wait two months for a tattoo to heal until a cover-up is done. Andy thankfully googled it and pointed out that two months seems to be a minimum, and more complex tattoos have up to six months of recommended healing before a cover job. She accepted the offer for free cover, and paperwork was signed and such. Thank you for watching the video. If you are interested in listening to these kinds of stories, we've got more in store for you. Simply subscribe to our channel, hit the like button, and share it with your friends.